Okay, so we're back. This is chapter three. This is actually the third section. I didn't say that for the second section. I, I don't care. That's fine. Um, and we're talking about whether or not these two variables are independent of each other. So here's what we need to, to look at with this. What's going to happen if I do that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing's going to happen if I do that. All right. Where's, where's my thing? Oh, it's over here. All right, so what this says is this. These variables are going to be independent of each other if the contingency state, if the, if the distribution of one variable in a contingency table is the same for all categories for the other variable. Now, what that means is this. Let's see if I can get this previous. There we go. Okay. If these conditional distributions are the same, that's going to tell me that this variable of class is not going to influence whether or not you survived or you died. Or whether or not you survived or died would not influence where you sat on the boat. And here's the example. It's not the same thing, but it'll serve our purposes. And we'll learn this later as well. And it is this. Here I have a fair diet, six-sided, and I say, okay, what's the probability, and I know it's, this isn't probability, just bear with me. What's the probability that if I roll this die, I'm going to get a four? And you say, well, if this die is fair, that probability would be one out of six. And, and you're right, okay? So then I roll this die. And then I ask the question, what's the probability that on a second roll, I'm going to get a four? Now, I'm not saying what's the probability that I'm going to get a four on a first roll and a four on a second roll. I'm saying I've made the first roll, and now I'm going to roll the die a second time. And I just look at you and say, hey, on the second roll, what's the probability that I'm going to get a four? And your answer is, well, it's, it's one out of six. And the answer to that is, is, you're right, it is. It's one out of six because what happened with the first roll is not going to influence what happened with the second roll. Now, if we think about it, the probability is one-six and the probability is one-six. They are the same. And that's the key here. They are the same. And if we were thinking about this, because what happens with the first roll not influencing the second roll, what we could tell ourselves is, you know what, the second roll is completely independent of the first roll. So if the percentages are the same, they are independent of each other. Now, here we have a, a, a deck of cards. It, it's, it's a big deck so you can, you can see what's going on. And I've taken the two jokers out of the deck of cards. And then I have the, the large cards here, and I'm going to shuffle them. There we go, they're shuffled. And I say to you, hey, because I'm a magician. And I go like this, I say, okay, what's the probability that you're going to pull out the seven of clubs? And you say, well, there's 52 cards, so that probability is one out of 52. So I say, go for it. And you go, holy crap. It's not supposed to happen. <laughs> you go, oh, look, I got the queen of clubs. I can't believe I got the seven of clubs. I got the queen of clubs. <laughs> I got the queen of clubs. I'm like, you're right, you did. It's not the seven of clubs. All right, so then I go, okay, what's the probability that, and I put the card over there. There, you know. There. Okay, so what's the probability that you are now going to get the seven of clubs? And you're like, Oh, it's 1 out of 51. And we're like, right, because what happened with the first card is going to influence the probability of what happens with the second card. So it influences. So the second draw is dependent on what happens with the first card because the probabilities are not the same. So since they're not the same, they are not independent. That's not it. I can't believe that we pulled out the seven of clubs. That was, that, that was amazing. That was amazing. What's the chance of that? Oh, it was one in 52. I'm playing the lottery. All right, so. If the probabilities are the same, if the percentages are the same, if the graphs are the same, then these two variables, class 
and survivability are going to be independent of each other. Independent meaning there's no relationship between them. So we look at the graph and say, hey, look, there they are. Are they the same? And the answer is no. They're not. So are they independent of each other? And the answer is no. They're not independent, which means one of these variables is in some way influencing the other. And it makes sense to us when we sit there and say, oh, yeah, you know what? Where you're at on the boat is going to influence your chances of surviving or not. So, so can, I say, can I say that your class on the boat is going to cause your likelihood of surviving to increase or decrease? Is it going to cause your survivability to increase or decrease? And your answer is no. It's not. And why isn't it? Because what's the only way that you can show that one thing causes another? It's through an experiment. And have we done an experiment? No. Could we do an experiment? No. No, I don't think we can. I don't think we can do an experiment where we're going to build a new Titanic and then say, oh, oh let's see who dies. That's it's just not going to happen. Okay, so that's independence. Okay, independence, independence. Now, here is what's called a segmented bar graph. What it is, it's a pie chart where you put it in this bar and you take the section of crew and you pick it out and you dump it down there and it fills up to here. Then you take the section of third class from your pie chart and you dump it in and it continues to fill up to here. And, and, and I hate these. I don't like them because, one, I think they're ugly. But they're great for side-by-side -side comparison. So is a pie chart for that matter. These are easier to make than a pie chart because you don't have to worry about the wedges being raped because you have to break out a protractor or something along those lines. So they're easier to make. They're more difficult to read because I have trouble looking at this over here and figuring out what percentage that is. A good pie chart's gonna have the percentages with them, so it's gonna be easier to read. These are easier to make. Pie charts are easier to read. And this is the exact same data. And we look at this, we say, hey, are these two variables, which is survivability down here, alive or dead, and class, the difference is in the board. Are they independent of each other? Are the graphs the same? The answer is the graphs aren't the same. They're not independent. All right. What can go wrong besides lots of things and the sun blowing up? Lots of things. Okay. The area principle. Big issue here. You know, Microsoft Excel, when you use it, is going to sit there and say, oh, do you want to make your graph 3D, because, you know, 3D, it's the new 2D. It's like, oh, let's make it 3D. Everybody wants to be 3D. But here's the problem that we have with a 3D graph. 3D is based off of perspective, meaning where are you looking at this? And where the center of the graph is, and knowing that the front normally looks bigger than the back, we've got some issues. Because here, look at second class and first class. Second class is 285 people, first class is 225 people, but because Second class is closer to you than first class, it looks bigger. It looks significantly bigger than this. Take a look at third class versus crew. Because of where the center is, third class looks much bigger than crew. 3D and graphs, especially pie charts, no, uh-uh, ain't gonna work. All right, what can go wrong? Make sure that your data shows what it's supposed to show. Look at this graph right here. Oh, I've got 26.7% people use marijuana. 31.5% of people are heavy drinkers, and 50% of people use al heavy alcohol, or just use alcohol. And then you're like, oh, it doesn't look like it's 50%. Well, it is 50%. The problem is, is that these two add up to 108.2%. That's an issue. Because you've got these two here and this at 108.2%. How do you get 108.2%? Well, do you think that the people who are heavy drinkers might use alcohol? No. That's probably not going to be the case. If you have the opportunity to judge yourself in more than one category, then you have the opportunity for your chart to be more than 100%, which means it can't be accurate. In order for your chart to be accurate, your categories have to be use of a word here, not like the other use, independent of each other. You can only be listed in one category. Either you use marijuana, you are a heavy drinker, or you use alcohol. You can't be in all three of these categories, and so it might be because, well, you know, these are herbologists, so therefore they don't, no, mm -hmm, 
no, no, no. That wouldn't be the case at all. So, I like that herbologist. Okay, just about done here. We're going to finish up and part four next.